Hi, this is Rob Smith from Bain Data Solutions and uh, this is another tutorial about the use of APIs to get um, data into Excel using a bit of VBA. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to come out and uh, write out and say it and uh, Unfortunately, I've developed this unfortunate habit of uh, pronouncing API as API. Um, I learned this in isolation. This is what you get from teaching yourself VBA and these things. It looks like it should be pronounced API to me, but um, it seems like the rest of the world disagrees. So I'll I'll swap um, swap between the two pronunciations. Um, so. In the last um, tutorial, I showed how we could take um, a data source. So um, I chose the Federal Reserve Economic Data, or FRED, uh, to look at a LIBOR rate. And by taking the URL, including a personalized API key from the website, which you can apply for, uh, and dropping that into Excel, I just chose to um, put the URL into a, a cell, though it could have been as a constant in the in in the code in that instance. And then run this. Uh, we wrote this code called get libel, which takes that URL, uses the win HTTP request, which acts as a a, a browser for um, retrieving the data so it takes that URL sends off a request for some data gets some response gets a response back in the form of text which is uh, in XML format then we use this MS XML2 uh, library and the DOM document object to uh, so we loaded that string into that document and that gives us the ability to run through the XML document and eventually drop that data into into our Excel document um, Excel worksheet so I'm going to try and reuse this code so it requires a URL to be in a cell named API URL in the worksheet API which it is and we're going to um, manipulate that um, URL to get some dynamic data so if we look at the the Fred site the and I've just done a search for LIBOR we'd see that there's many different um, LIBOR rates on the site so there's one month three month, 12 month, overnight and also available for various different currencies so there's US dollar, British pound, there's uh, Euro, Swiss franc and Japanese yen lots and lots of different information. Now we can envisage a scenario where if you're working in financial services you may want to retrieve all of that information in which case you could go through um, go through each one of these series and 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 put put a, put in a loop to go through um, to go through those those data series so we've got here just a few examples so we can see this is the overnight British pound LIBOR rate um, so that's the this that gives you the data series after um, searching for it and that's the data that it returns so I, I've just trimmed down the URL from last time so that the observation start date is a lot a um, lot more recent so the 3rd of June um, other data series so one month euro three month US dollar six month um, euro and we can see that the the only difference in this the way the series is um, is made up or the the text string which makes up the series is in these first six characters so the first three um, identify the currency and then the next three identify the term and then the final five are always static so overnight is ONT pound sterling is GBP 
one month is one MTD and euros is EUR USD for dollars and so on and so forth with a, a little bit of difference for 12 months doesn't have the T on it because it's just three characters and once we're using two digits for the months uh, we can't fit that on so let's let's get cracking on trying trying to build something so let's first of all um, make a make a cell which will just reference that API um, let's just make it a bit bigger so we can um, see what we're looking at exactly uh, let's have a look so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up this URL uh, into various different parts and then the the dynamic parts we can we can change with a combo box or something so let's have a prefix so the prefix um, is pretty standard so they're all the same up until there so let's just pop that in there and then we've got a series which is made up of a currency and a term and then we've got this observation Oops. Um, then we've got. I'll just remove this hyperlink so it doesn't uh, fire off every time I click in there. Um, so we've got this observation start date. So we'll call that start and. I'm going to make this a little bit more dynamic. So the data source that we're using this um, Fred data is oh, for LIBOR is always delayed by a week. So you can't find the most uh, very recent data. So if you had a paid for API, then then you, I would imagine you would be able to get the um, latest data, but this one's free, so we can't. So let's just make up a text string which replaces that um, observation date. So observation text now. Oops, just one too many parentheses there. So what we've got is this observation start date equals will always be the same and then now minus 10 that by default um, will take off 10 days and then it formats in this format to match the format that we've got here. So that will always have the start date as 10, 10 days previous. So that should work for us. Now the suffix is always the same also so the tag names um, tells us which columns we want to return and the API key is our personalized key um, so we could make the tag names dynamic and we could um, we could in theory um, put our uh, API key as a global variable in our code which we probably would do if um, if we were making a a thorough job of this, but um, as it's just for show, we'll just we'll just uh, pop them both together. So the full URL will go in there, and let's let's then make up these bits. So I'm going to put in two drop-down lists. So I'm going to pre-fill the values for those so if we recall the currency options were USD, GBP or EUR and they kind of make sense to me and I would imagine most users of this kind of data so 
we'll put them in as as they're required rather than having some sort of transformation on them uh, the terms are a bit more opaque so we'll change those so and have a little bit of a transformation on those so um, so this is what we'll show the users what's on the left and populate our URL with what's on the right so let's just have some drop down this so combo for currency and a combo for term um, and we'll use the format control options for these to populate them so the input range for the currency one is those and the number that will return so one two or three can go in there and then similar with this one five options to show to the user and we'll drop the answer there right, let's just make sure those are working looks good and then we'll use the index function to retrieve what was what we need to populate the URL in these two so it's going to pick off the nth option as chosen by the user so that matches there let's just quickly see that they do the kind of things that we want them to so that's good and now we can complete the series name which is the currency followed by the term followed by D 156 N which we can see in our URL down here and then we can complete the full URL which is B1 and B2 and B3 and B4 so that completes the full URL and then we can assign some macros so this runs get libor and so does this one and I've already made this formula in here so that it is referring to cell B5 in there so our old code should run exactly uh, exactly the same so it should retrieve the data and put it back into this API sheet here so if we choose an option Let's um, let's choose one that we've got a data set for already. So we've got three month USD in there. Uh, let's choose three month USD. So uh, it's returned four values since the date that we picked off. So two seven eight seven for the second of July. Let's just check that the 2nd of June I should say, sorry um, uh, we haven't got the 2nd of June in the one that I've picked um, started it a little bit later Let's just, so yeah, 2787, great so it's got the data that we expect and we're normally when you're dealing with this sort of information it's only the, the most recent uh, date that uh, we require uh, so let's just put in a little formula to return the most recent date and value so I like using the offset function now there's a few different ways you can achieve that so we want to retrieve the very last value so if we offset cell f1 by the number of 
observations which we've got in this column and don't offset the number of columns so, so offset F1 oops I've spelled offset wrong um, so that gives us our date and we should be able to copy that in if we do F1 and change our date format change that to percentage then we'll call this uh, latest LIBOR and although it gives us a few error messages a nice easy way to format things is to just do this and then convert to range and merge those over and that looks to be just about what we wanted um, we could obviously tidy this up a bit so we could hide these um, rows and columns which have got our references in uh, probably want to do that in a more systematic way if we were doing this for real but uh, let's just try a few different options so a GBP Owen overnight so, um, 0.48 percent yeah uh, I've got the strange euro rates being negative at the moment um, up to six month but yeah I think that's just about does it um, any comments or questions just leave them in the um, either on my website or on the YouTube um, link for this video and I'll speak to you again soon bye